I have two and a half hours left to finish the game and I've got two boss battles, an ending, another level to make and the story. I've come up with a good idea. I'm going to get other people to do voice acting. If you've been following this project then that will come as no surprise to you but for me I didn't think about getting other people to voice act until about three hours before the deadline so it was quite difficult to cram it all in as well as making the game. Fortunately for me the deadline was in America so I had until about six or seven in the morning to finish it. However I had university the next day so I needed to finish by about two in the morning. Even without adding some extra levels I would have struggled to fit it all in but I had to add some extra ones just to try and get to the final boss sequence so I made this level with all the original textures I used and then made another level afterwards for the final boss battle and then called it a day. It was a decent length for a game, it's probably one of the longest that I've made to date. When I'm making the game I expect it to be about 30 or 40 levels long. That's probably why I never finish my games. When you look at professional games that last 7 or 8 hours and have 40 levels, they tend to be made by big companies over several years and they're being sold for money. But with amateurish games like this, you're lucky if someone even downloads your game. I'm sure you've looked through websites before and just skipped through hundreds of games. Each of those has probably taken the person 10-20 hours at least to make and it can be really disheartening if you make a game, release it and it gets about 3 comments and someone just rates it 2 stars and says oh it would be better if you could shoot bullets even though the game includes it. It's obvious that they've just gone on it for a couple of seconds, not really played it properly and have just well stopped playing. It's really really depressing especially when you spend hours and hours making it. I mean instead of making a game I could make a video on YouTube that gets thousands of views. Who would be stupid enough to make a game anyway? Two and a half hours left, I'm now making the boss level. You can see me getting all the voice actors to do their lines here. I made the final boss fight up as it went along, there wasn't really anything that amazing there but it, it seemed to be quite a challenge. There are two different stages it goes between, one with the bat dropping droppings all over you and another one with all the bats coming down the screen to attack you. It just gets annoying to playtest after a while because it takes several minutes to play it each time and I did get killed quite a few times as well. By the time you watch this video I'll probably have uploaded the source file so you can see how it was made and everything if you have Multimedia Fusion 2. I think that this is when Rich gave me his voice samples to put in the game. At first the scream that he did I just thought was totally inappropriate but that made it even better when I put it in. I was so amused I made a video clip out of it. Another thing I found is that although amateurish games like this can't compete with large game companies in terms of graphics or sound or gameplay, well sometimes gameplay, one thing that small games like this have the edge on is humour. Large games can't seem to add it in too well. It's the same in real life, like Monty Python, I think that's the lowest budget thing in the world. But it was funny, so everyone liked it. Without all the little jokes this game would have been really boring, but with them it makes it fun to play. I remember a game called Armed and Dangerous which was worth playing just for all the, the little cutscenes between the levels and the bump mapping on the person's back but yeah, enough of that. I was very obsessed with graphics back then. MDK was another game that did humour quite well. The Granny Eve's voice. This one. I replaced it with this one. That's an improvement. But enough of that, this is crunch time. I improved the loading and main menu screens a bit. Before you just click on the icons and they go to the right frame. But now it makes a click sound when you move your mouse over it and it also lights up. It's a very small thing to do but it, it makes a big difference. There's something very satisfying about this screen because I know that each of those icons is a different level that I've made. This is the point when I look back at what I've done and I go, wow, I've actually done something. And the amount of time I've spent making this making of series, I could have actually made the game again. On a completely unrelated topic, I suggest you look up the game called K Krieger. It's an entire first person shooter and it's only 96 kilobytes large, or something like that. In fact, a screenshot of it is larger than the game itself. And if you're bored, which I guess you are if you're watching this, I suggest you also look up a game called Facade. These are two shareware games which just blew me away when I played them for the first time, because they were so different to everything else out there. 
here I'm just going over the game that I've made and I'm adding extra bits in. I'm still not sure if it was a good idea, but I added a bat in the first fight scene who tells you not to fight them. Hopefully no one will listen to what he says, because that makes the whole story work. And although it's kind of overkill in terms of how many things you're taking in at once, I think it does add to the game, so yeah, I didn't delete it again after I made it. And here you can just see me playtesting the last two boss scenes. Although I hate doing the middle of the project, I like the beginning, and I like this stage where I'm just adding more to the game, because I know that I could release it at any point, but the more I playtest and add to it, the better it is. All of a sudden you reach a stage where you're not just making the game because you need to make it, but you're making it because you want to make it, and that just makes it so much better. You look at all the code and you just go, yeah, it's all finished, this all works. It's the same with map making as well. Imagine this graph has time along the bottom and how good the game is up along the side. I'm currently at stage 3. Tom was the narrator, he kind of improvised a bit with his lines, so I'm just typing up what he says here so people can read it if they can't understand what he's saying because there are people like that on the internet. And that's it. That's the finished game. Apart from the save system that I added afterwards, and the extra graphics, and several hours of playtesting. But that doesn't count. That's just like the extra hour people get at the end of Scrap Heap Challenge, just to make sure their machines work. So you've seen a game made from start to finish. You can now play it and think, hey look, I saw him make that. I don't know if you found this interesting or not, I'd like some feedback, because this is just a little bit of an experiment. I did this because I thought that people might be interested in seeing how games were made, or at least how they're made with Multimedia Fusion 2. And if anybody wants to start making their own games, I could start doing tutorials on how to use Multimedia Fusion 2, because it's something I know how to use. So yeah, until next time, have fun! The end. I've been a British person. Good night. <laughs>